Welcome to the body imaging cases. This is a case of a female, 29 years old, with acute right lower abdominal pain and vomiting, pregnant for seven weeks. Based on this clinical scenario, the three possibilities of ectopic pregnancy, acute appendicitis, and right ovarian torsion were thought of. Transvaginal ultrasonography has been performed. It showed intrauterine viable pregnancy and excluded the presence of ectopic pregnancy at the adnexa. The left ovary was normal with a cyst 2.5 cm in diameter. And the right ovary showed two abnormal features. First, the presence of a larger cyst 5 cm in diameter. Second, the stroma of the right ovary is quite echogenic. If you compare here the right ovarian echogenicity with that of the left ovary, you appreciate how echogenic the right ovary is. The cyst related to the right ovary showed a nodule projecting it into its space, probably representing serous cyst adenoma. And the Doppler spectrum of the arteries supplying the right ovary was normal. The third clinically suspected possibility, acute appendicitis, remained to be explored. So uh, abdominal ultrasonography with graded compression of the right iliac fossa was performed. No acute appendicitis could be demonstrated. Abdominal ultrasonography of the uterus again demonstrated the presence of a normal viable intrauterine gestational sac. And the right adnexa showed again the echogenic ovary, right ovary, with the cyst related to it, with a knob projecting out of its inner aspect of its wall, probably serous cyst adenoma. So the ovarian torsion, the right ovarian torsion, seems to be the best choice of the three. We see some ovarian follicles surrounded by echogenic rim. The so-called echogenic follicular ring sign. And we see the large ovarian mass and the echogenicity of the ovarian stroma. So we have three signs of torsion out of a large number of signs described in ultrasonography of ovarian torsion. The surgeon needed more confirmation of the diagnosis of ovarian torsion before going in. So MRI has been requested and this sagittal T2 weighted image shows the right ovary and the cyst associated with it to be located now anterior to the uterus. Remember that on ultrasonography, we have seen it at the normal location. We see free peritoneal fluid, another sign of ovarian torsion, and we see edema of the ovarian stroma and dark rims around the ovarian follicles. This is the projection into the cyst related to the right ovary, which is consistent with serous cyst adenoma more than any other cysts of the ovary. And the yellow arrow points to thick, low intensity rim of some of the follicles which is not only a sign of ovarian torsion, but a sign also that the torsed ovary is starting to be devitalized. 
we see three peritoneal fluid. And looking at the right ovary, you see a very thick fallopian tube related to it. You can trace it, trace it further. to the right horn of the uterus. So it seems likely here that we are dealing with adnexal torsion rather than isolated ovarian torsion. We see this lesion at the posterior myometrium which should not be mistaken for a leomyoma. It is focal myometrial contraction based on its configuration. Leomyoma tends to be spherical and this focal myometrial contraction is most of the time non-spherical in its configuration. We will see more clues in support of this diagnosis. Probably my best learning point in this case is the importance of the gradient echo T2 weighted, T2 star weighted MRI in diagnosis of ovarian infarction in cases of ovarian torsion. Here you see the transverse turbospin echo, T2 weighted MRI, and also the transverse gradient echo, T2 star weighted MRI. And if you look at the two ovaries, the left ovary pointed to by the yellow arrow and the right by the red arrow, they may look similar or almost so in the transverse spin echo T2 weighted M MRI, but on the gradient echo T2 star weighted MRI, they are entirely different. This is the blooming effect of the gradient echo T2 star weighted image when there is hemorrhagic change. A very good sign that this torsed ovary is infarcted. We can again trace the infarcted fallopian tube, but before continuing with that, here is another learning, learning point. The blue arrows point to a very small hypo-intense structure on the turbospin echo, T2-weighted MRI, which shows also blooming on the gradient echo, T2-star-weighted MRI. This is a previous caesarean section scar at the lower uterine segment. And we frequently see this blooming effect in the surgical incisions, even if no metallic clips are present. We are further tracing the infarcted fallopian tube to the right uterine horn. The yellow arrows here point to a third type of blooming artifact. It is a subclinical bleeding within the uterine cavity but it shows you how nicely the gradient echo T2 star weighted MRI shows the bleeding. And it has to be a part of the technique whenever the possibility of intrauterine bleeding related to pregnancy is suspected. 
we see also that the focal myometrial contraction at the posterior myometrium has disappeared and now the posterior myometrium is relaxed. This is an interesting aspect of the focal myometrial contraction. The picture to your left hand side is the scout used to plan the images. And the image to your right hand side is the sagittal turbospin echo image. And you notice that the focal myometrial contraction occurred at the anterior myometrium at the beginning of the examination, then disappeared and reappeared at the posterior myometrium and then also disappeared. This transient nature of the focal myometrial contraction should be taken in consideration, not to mistake it for leomyoma. So the diagnosis here was serous cystadenoma of the right ovary causing right adnexal torsion with right ovary and fallopian tube hemorrhagic infarction in early pregnancy. And the learning points are Increased echogenicity of the ovary in the setting of an associated ovarian lesion and acute epsilateral pelvic pain may raise the possibility of ovarian torsion, even if the position of the ovary is not changed. Anterior location of the ovary in relation to the antiverted flexed uterus may raise the possibility of ovarian torsion. I'm referring you here to case 11 of the same series where the ovary in torsion has been identified in front of the uterus. The next learning point is that the gradient echo T2 star weighted MRI is good for demonstration of infarction in cases of torsion. At nexal torsion is differentiated from ovarian torsion by the associated thickening and hemorrhage of the fallopian tube on MRI. Focal myometrial contraction is differentiated from leomyoma by its non-spherical configuration and its transient nature. Surgical incisions may be identified by blooming artifact on gradient echo MRI, even in the absence of metallic clips.